guys. So this is Dr. Loga and Miss Cynthia here. We are trying to do a virtual Sabbath school for you. So what we're gonna do in the next couple of weeks is have a pre-taped version for you. And then this way, um, through the holidays, we'll be able to still have something for you to watch. So our first thing we're gonna do is we'll do a welcome and a prayer. And then I sent home some Bible quizzes with my letter and my next quarter's quarterly. Um, You'll see they're all stapled together. We're gonna to do a quiz each time too, just to kind of have something to review and do together. And then we're going to review our Sabbath school lesson. And this week we're doing December 19th, 2020. It's going to be lesson 25. And the name of it is Squabbles and Snares. So we'll start with a um, opening prayer and then move into our Lesson study. Mm -hmm. We were going to do uh, music, but it would have been a, a duet. So <laughs> you can hum to yourself or sing a special song, but um, we're not going to sing today. So if you'll bow your heads. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that we have the ability to still spend time with each other, spend time with you. Please be with Dr. Loga and I and our students as we spend time in your word, Lord. Please help us to grow and be blessed. And be with everyone who is sick and healing, Lord. Continue to let them heal. And be with us over our break. Help us to remember that you are the reason for this season, Lord. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, as we, uh, <clears throat> as we talked about, we are going to open with a quiz. All of, the, um, all of the answers can be found in Matthew chapter 2. This will be kind of like our own Sabbath school version of the uh, Bible quiz that we have in church each week. Right. So, it's... It's a little longer, though, so I know a lot of you, that's probably your favorite part of the whole church service anyway, so it is for there me. you go. Okay, our first question, again, Matthew 2, we're going to be using the New King James Version. And, and they're, I'm sorry, Dr. Logan, they're stapled in order, so we're doing the wise men deceive Herod. Okay. Yes, so Matthew 2, the wise men deceive Herod. For the first question, the, the question is, in the story of the three wise men, they are also known as this, and you can find the answer in Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Is it A, Herodites, B, Magi, C, Messi Messianists, or D, Judeans? Okay, so what we'll do is I will try to guess the answer. Okay. I'll probably be wrong sometimes, and then we'll read where it's found. So, the three wise men, I believe, were the Magi. That sounds right. That's, that's that what I right. thought It's like the gift of the Magi, right? Right. Like. Oh, it is the gift. Yeah, see? So, there it is. But I'll be reading from, uh, it's going to be the New King James Version. Yes. So, Matthew 2, chapter 1. Matthew 2, verse yeah, 1. Matthew chapter 1 is not going to give the answer to us, so let's try that again. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Okay, well that did not give me the answer. It did not. It said just said wise men. So, we are going to be reading from the NIV version, because that's where we found the correct answer. So, Matthew 2, chapter 1, it says, it even leads with the Magi visit the Messiah. There you go. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judah, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. So, all that to prove that I was right. Yes. It was worth the work. Worth yes. the work. It was worth the work. That's right. All right. Question two. True or false? King Herod was happy to hear of the Messiah being born. You can find this in Matthew 2, 3. So we've actually been at a subject school reading a lot of this. So I can very confidently say he was not happy. He should have been happy. He should have been happy. But he was not happy. He was not happy. So I think not happy, so I would believe false would be the answer. Okay. Matthew 2, 3. Yes, Matthew 2, 3. When King Herod heard this news, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. I'm going to go with disturbed means not happy. If somebody called me disturbed, it would not be a it would not be a, oh, and you're just such a happy person, you're so disturbed. People have called me that, actually. <laughs> so I did not take it in a positive light, no. Okay, then. So the, the answer, answer was false. <laughs> um, question three. Around 725 B.C., the Old Testament prophet Micah predicted the Messiah would be, and the options here are born of a virgin, 
or B, born in Bethlehem, or C, Herod's killer, or D, Herod's successor. And you can find this in Matthew 2, 6. Okay, so uh, the reason that King Harold was not happy was because I think he thought that would be his killer. Mm -hmm. But because the Magi were coming, and I know that King Herod said, come back and tell me, this is where my scribes and priests say he'll be born in Bethlehem. I believe the answer would be born in Bethlehem. Yes. Though he was born of a virgin. He was right? born that of a virgin. That is true. Yes. Right. yes. But I don't believe that's the case right here. So right. we're going to look in Matthew 2, 6. But, ye, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rules of Judah, well, rulers of Judah. Well, there you go. For out of you will come a ruler who will be shepherd for my people. So there's nothing about him being born of a virgin there, but it does say, be born in Bethlehem. Yes. So the answer is B. Man, I'm making 100 so far. Yeah, you're doing great, aren't you? Number four, Herod told the wise men to find the Messiah, his excuse being that, A, he wanted to bring him gifts, he wanted to bring him gifts, B, he wanted to worship him too, or C, he wanted tax money. Well, in today's society, I would say C is probably true, yes, right? Yeah. But I believe, and that while B is probably what he should have done, right? Like he should have wanted to worship him, and I'm sure, if I remember right, that's what he claims he wants. I think that's B is the answer. Yes. I think he claims yes. to them that he yes. wants to worship yes. him too, but. I don't know. Because well, maybe he, he wants to bring gifts. him gifts. He may want to be bring him gifts. I don't know why. It's kind of like he... No, those are close. Those so. are close. And he kind of had to know his audience, right? So his audience was coming to worship because they were excited for a new king. So I'm thinking maybe he would say, hey, I want to worship him too. But does he know they brought gifts? Because then he might say, I have gifts. I don't know. But I think um, it's B. Okay. Well, will you read it for us? I Let's find out. I would read it for us. That's Matthew 2, 8 by the way. So he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go and worship him. All right. So the answer was again, oh, B. Boop. I'm telling you. There's a lot of Bs. Have you noticed all the lot. answers have been Bs except for the one false? And in some sense it was true or false. And the answer was also B, B. there too. I did not. But now that I've seen that, I will. Now we wonder, right? I will wonder. I think though with this next question, it's not going to be B based on what B is. Many, so, question five. Many people think the wise men saw Jesus in the manger. Matthew 2.11 says it was A, in a barn, B, in a store, C, in a public square, or D, in a house. Okay. This one could be sneaky. Like, I, I, I want to guess that it was probably in a barn or in a house, but I don't know which one it might be. So. I, I know that they came while after, but they were still in Bethlehem, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. I believe. I, yes, I believe so, yes, because, because they, they, that's where they were going. They were right. heading to Bethlehem. So I would think that it wouldn't be a barn, because me as a mother, once I had my precious baby, I'd want to get him out of the manger as soon as possible. And we know that it took months for the Magi to come. Yeah, which I always have a question there about why are they still in Jerusalem for taxation months later? Right. Right. It's kind of strange. Unless they were like told, oh, you got to go back, by the way, right? I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. The timeline is all very confusing, and Desire of Ages has not made it more, it, it has not made it easier. It's it made did. it more confusing, actually. It did Because then there's a, oh, and then they took him to the temple, but then they went back to Bethlehem, like... Because they're in Bethlehem for a while. Mm-hmm. Apparently. So, and it took, it's, it does say it took, um, well, from other things you read, right? It does say it took a while. So, I don't know. But I would think it's in a house, too. Because I don't think it'd be in a store mm -hmm. or in public square. Well, so, would you read Matthew 2.11 for I us to see what it says it was? Well, we'll go to the Bible. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So did, she, did they have to rent a house? It's very confusing. It because if there was no room in the inn for him to be born... Why Maybe some time, some stuff opened up. Again, it seems like they're just sticking around there for a while. Yes. I have an extended hospital visit. <laughs> well, I'm going to add this to the list of questions to ask one day. Right. But I, I think at that time we may not care as much. But right now, I would like to know. 
So, so, if you were listening to that, you also got the answer to question six, which is, they opened their get treasures and gave him gifts of frankincense, myrrh, and what else? Gold. I'm going to go with the gold. So, yeah. the answer, the possibilities are A, silver, B, bronze, C, gold, or D, fresh flowers. And... I grew up with the generation of one of these things is not like the other, right? right. And usually that's probably not going to be the answer, right? So, so you ruled out fresh I ruled flowers. out fresh flowers, right? And they're clearly going for an Olympics medal vibe here, right? Silver, right. bronze, gold, right? But yes, I'm going to go with the answer is C. They would have brought the best, yes, yes. which would be gold. Which, there is actually some interesting ideas about what each of these gifts sort of represented. So... Okay. Gold was definitely, was very much about riches and splendor. I believe frankincense was also kind of, it kind of pertained to royalty. I think it was a spice only royalty was allowed to use. Right. And myrrh was actually a burial spice. So you actually have a little bit of all of the, you kind of have, these are all very symbolic for Christ, right? Well, what was, what, did it, what was it that Mary used? Didn't she use frankincense on Jesus' feet? Uh, no, Where? she used spike, she used, uh, she used what is called spike nard. It's precious ointment or perfume. It never really says whether it is. Okay. It's not, yeah. But I do know myrrh is a bur burial spice, that okay. it was used for burial. Interesting that they brought him yes. a burial spice. Mm -hmm. When the Magi also believed, I thought that he was going to set his, because everyone kind of thought he was putting his kingdom here on earth. So it's interesting that they would bring a burial spice. It makes you wonder if they knew something yeah. about it, if they knew more. Maybe they were the only people. I mean, because here's the other thing is, apparently you have to ask the question, how did the Magi know? How did they know? Well, and they, it's easy to say, oh, well, they had the stars of their study scripture, but the only scripture they really had, they said, well, we followed a star. There's only one scripture in all of the Bible that tells you that. So this is why you study your Bible carefully. There you go. <laughs> in the... Um, Bible book that we were looking at, it does suggest that they had studied the scripture somehow, some way. So I don't know either, but they, they were well versed in who this was going to be. Which there's another side to that too of how did they get the scriptures because right. they were from the east. Well, what it probably was, and this is another important thing, was lest we forget the children of Israel, namely the tribe of Judah, was in captivity for years over in Babylon. And so they probably were from, like, Medo-Persia area, yes. and they had been witnessed to. They had probably gotten this information from when the Jews were in exile right. there. because Daniel would have been in Babylon, mm -hmm. too, and he mm -hmm. obviously wrote mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff. And so... Interesting, yeah. They, that's probably a lot of how they figured this out, so... It's very interesting if you dig too deep, which I know we are going a little longer yeah. on our quiz, but it's interesting. But it is interesting, yes. All right, uh, question seven. They didn't tell Herod where they went because they were warned not to. Matthew 2, 12. And the answer and the questions of they were warned not to how. Okay, that's sort of the question is how were they warned not to. Okay, and A, were they warned by the shepherds? B, were they warned by the drummer boy? Or C, were they war warned by a dream? That is hard to say that word for some reason. <laughs> I'm glad that you not me, because I'd be someone all over it. Well, the shepherds, if we are saying they were born, they came a long distance apart, we know the shepherds went to the stable. So I'm going to say not the shepherds. Not the shepherds. Um, I know the song, The Drummer Boy, The Drummer Boy, and I don't remember it saying anything about him warning the magic. No. But I could be wrong. So I'm going to go by a dream. Feels like That's process of elimination. I like it. That's how you do standardized yeah. tests. That's, That's right. how I've gotten so far in life, is just mm -hmm. eliminating things. There you go. All right. Well, so Matthew 2 12 says, And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. There you go. Or route. Whichever one you route, need. route, route. So, answer? Answer is definitely C by a dream. Question eight, our last question. Herod was so angry when the Magi deceived him, he ordered the deaths of who? And this is in Matthew 2, verse 16. And I think we know this, unfortunately. Unfortunately. So, A, all newborns, B, all children under the age of two, or C, all boys under the age of two. You know, And I this should, is this is a nuanced I question. This I is don't not, know the you're answer. like, I don't know the answer. <laughs> because, interestingly enough, yesterday when I was reading the little Bible story to pre-K and K, it said that all children 
And I've always thought it was. I think it's all children under the age of two. I think it's answers B again. Yeah, I know. I think it's B again. I always thought it was all boys. I think it's all. I think you're getting it confused with the story of Moses. Moses. So I, yeah, I always thought it was all boys. So it wasn't that easy for me because I probably, until yesterday, would have said all boys under the age of two. But I guess we go to the Bible, right, for the correct answer. And Matthew two sixteen says. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, well, in accordance go. with the time he, uh, he had learned from the Magi. That's what's interesting, too, is did it take them two years to get there then? Because in I accordance to the time... Maybe he knew, like, maybe Herod's so bad at this that, like, he doesn't even trust the prophecies. He's like, hmm, it's a star in the sky. Sure, they're chasing some random star, but, I mean, they have other prophecies, and, you know, how accurate can these time prophecies really be? So let's let's get some nuance there, plus or minus two years. It's terrible. It's just people. It's just babies, right? right. I mean, it's terrible. So this does say all boys. There you go. So the answer is C, all boys under the age of two. Yeah. It's so sad as there are some things that as you get older and you become parents and you get married, well, get married, you become parents, things hit you harder. And it's so heartbreaking to think that you're just at home living your own life and somebody breaks in and kills. And it could have been two of your children. Yeah. You could have had a, a one and a half year old or newborn. Even worse here, think about the fact of if, this, if the tax station still was happening at this point, they were still there right. for the census, it's like, what, you're required by law to go to this place so that then the crazy local king can, like, kill all your children? Like... It's very true. That's very, like, you think of that, that's just, like, that's terrible. It's terrible. Did you... It's terrible. So that's, that is really sad. Now, so we can give you the answer, because I know my boys would go crazy about it. We will do the unscramble as well. Oh. Dr. Logan will unscramble it for us. Oh, I will. You okay. will. So the question is, Joseph was warned in a dream that Herod would try to kill the baby Jesus. The angel in the dream said to, and now here we have to, said to, I'm guessing there's supposed to be a him. So, him, I have to say, said to him. Right. The first one I think is obviously take. So we're looking, if you look at it. Dne, si, Speaking in tongues right now. Yeah. Okay, well, obviously, it's more fun to say it how it's read. I totally got the answer from that too. Thank you. I'll just, yeah, there you I'll just put it backwards. So clearly, it's take take Jesus Jesus and his mother to Egypt. That one was easy. It okay, was. I can even do that one. There you go. I started trying to write it. And there's no point. Even yeah, I was like, now. That, no, it I takes too that. long to write it. Now. Okay. All right. So. Thank you, Dr. Logan, for doing our quiz. Thank you for looking all the things up in the Bible. We had this, a scramble with uh, translations there at the beginning. So, Look at that. NIV, apparently, is the, NIV. is the winner. I did not know that. Okay, so we're going to look, like I said, at Lesson 5, our memory verse this week. I'm sure you've all learned it since you're so dedicated. Uh, the memory verse is, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that's Matthew 18.3. And again, something as that I have learned as a parent is that children just accept what you say. And I think that that's what he's saying. You have to have faith. And part of the faith is accepting what Jesus has told you. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't need to question Jesus. You question others who may have a different version of the Bible or a different look in the Bible, but you don't question Jesus. You don't question what his intentions are or why. You just follow. You follow in faith. And that's hard to do when you're an adult. Mm -hmm. It is. So, Sometimes all of that stuff that we learn gets in our way, right? And children also, they don't worry about, well, hopefully they don't. Some might. But they don't have to worry where things are going to come from. Who's going to feed them? Where their food's going to come from? Their clothes? Mm -hmm. They just, their parents are taking care of them. Yep. They just so, trust and are taken care of. That's right. That's true. So, there is a context to this story, though, to the story, to this uh, verse of why Jesus is saying it to them. And 
The title of this week's lesson is Squabbles and Snares, and so we wanted to kind of briefly go over a little bit of some questions as to, the que as to what was happening. So to give the general context, the disciples start bickering among themselves, okay? And then as they're sort of bickering among themselves, Jesus kind of makes a point to be like, you should be like children. You know, like, he kind of makes a point to, like, he sees some children and uses them as an object lesson of, be more like children, you know? Have you seen those memes of, like, this is so-and-so, they do this, this, and this, be like them, yes, you know? Like, yes, you've seen those yes, things? Yeah. That's what Jesus is doing here. He had the original version of this meme, right? Of, look at children. They, they have faith in whoever, like, that they'll just be taken care of, and they just trust and obey. Be like children. <laughs> but what were they squabbling about? Ah, so that's the question, right? Is what were they squabbling about? So yes, as Jesus and his disciples traveled to Capernaum, what were the disciples squabbling about? And ironically, this is something that I'm sure poor Miss Cynthia has heard to, had to hear her boys squabble about, something similar to this. They, they do, not, not too bad, not too bad, but they do, they do. Um, it would be who would be the greatest in Christ's kingdom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my kids really don't, don't squabble too much about that. It's who do I love more, which I try to avoid, because um, obviously I love all three equally. But for them, it wasn't even about who does God love more. It was mm -hmm. who's going to be the greatest? Yep. Who's sitting next to you? Yeah. And, and interesting that it's so, this is chapter 18 when he says this in Matthew. Mm -hmm. It's been a minute since they've, they've been, been there doing a while, things. Yeah. yeah, he's, he's, been he's there a coming while. to the close. Depending on which, um, depending on which uh, gospel you read, it actually happens even later. Like we believe it actually happened even further into his ministry because Matthew kind of gets a weird ordering yeah. to stuff. But I believe in the book of Luke, like it happens much later in the book of Luke. Like it's very, it's a ways in, and like, or maybe it's John I'm thinking of. But like a lot of times, even people put this all the way up to like the Last Supper that like they're arguing about this. I was this. trying. I think at the Last Supper they did argue. Mm -hmm. I was trying to think. There could be more than one time. Maybe right. they learned their lesson. You I know? think, well, obviously they did that just like <laughs> us, right? Mm -hmm. They do that all the time. But I was trying to think because one of the things that our lesson has told us and we've talked about is these follow Desire of Ages. And in Desire of Ages she does talk about it. So I'll kind of try to look here as mm -hmm. we're going to and see if I can find a better time when it happens. I think she had a whole chapter on it. I'm pretty sure she okay. did. So we were talking, it was the, who would be the greatest? Um, so whose desire to be the greatest led to the war in heaven? And that is that is the key point here, right? right? Is recognizing that it's easy to say, oh, well, they just want to be the greatest. What's the harm in that, right? But yeah. the Bible specifically tells us that Lucifer's desire to be greatest in heaven is what led to sin, right? right. I mean, that's exactly. what led to this whole messed up world that we're living in. Right? Exactly, exactly. So... And, you know, and prophet and, uh, prophets and patriots and prophets, Ellen G. White even says, we can't question that. Nobody understands why Lucifer all of a sudden had that feeling. Mm -hmm. So we can't question where it came from. But now that he's had it, it is something mm -hmm. that we will all feel sometimes is maybe that feeling of it's almost coveted, I would think, right? When, well, I mean, it's pride, right? It's pride. I, heard a, I heard a really great sermon, and I think C.S. Lewis says something about this, that Pride is sort of the mother of all sins, right? It's the it's the sin behind pretty much every sin, right? right. Is being prideful about something, right? I right. mean, for instance, if you don't believe that, think about the number one thing that usually keeps you from apologizing to someone, right? It would be pride. even when you realize you're right, is you're like, well, but mm, you don't want to. It's like it still feels wrong, right? It's, it's you want to save face. You have pride about that, right? Yes. It's like you want to be right. That's so. a really good point, yes. It's, it kind of comes along with selfishness, too, mm -hmm. which is right there. Because I heard someone someone else say that it was covetness, uh, covet mm -hmm. was what Satan had. So that's kind of the first, almost the first sin was coveting. To be I, don't, I guess I don't like coveting. I don't like that it's coveting. Like when people say that, I like the idea of pride a little bit better because the pride kind of led to the coveting, but also because yeah. coveting sort of implies that like, oh, well, he was given all this stuff, and so he wanted more because he was given all that stuff, which then it kind of puts the blame on God, which plays right into his hand, right? And it's that like, it's, it, it's a, it's easy for people to say, oh, you should just be happy with what you want, but how many times have you found that the more you get, the more you want, yes. right? Yes. And I mean, maybe that is sinful desire right there, right? But I don't, but I'd say that happened sort of after the fact. Again, going back to the pride, I think it was his pride that led him to that. Of like, well, I've been given all this stuff. Why not get, be given more? I should right. be getting more even. 
it, whatever it is, it's very hard to mm -hmm. understand where that thought came from. It's, it is, it's hard to imagine in a perfect world where that came from. It is, and that's the it's, weird thing of free yeah. will, right? Free yeah. will is confusing like that. It's like, how do you go from, I'm perfect in everything, to suddenly I'm not, yeah. right? And no one caused it. You just, you suddenly just, you had a thought and you kept going with it, right? Yeah. I mean, we all have thoughts all the time, right? But we don't just roll with them, right? And he just rolled with, rolled with it. it. And you know, to go with pride too, it says, it tells us that he knew. Mm -hmm. He knew that if he had, he was wrong before he fell, mm -hmm. and that if he and if, and if he had repented, then it would have gone back. He would have even been placed back where he was in his place of honor. So it was, you know, he did have the pride. So it wasn't just naive. It wasn't just innocent naive, naive. Uh, like naive. He was convicted right? before he fell mm -hmm. that he was in the wrong. And that's the thing. I guess that's where sin is, right? Yeah. Sin is not the. Oh, I suddenly discovered this other thing that no one warned me about. Because a lot of times that's what we see the Garden of Eden. But no, it's that God told them that it was yes. bad, right? They were told it was wrong. It yeah. wasn't just, Angels. I randomly found a, a tree today and I ate from it. Apparently that upset God for reasons. Right. It wasn't that, right? right? And angels talked to Adam and Eve and warned them to mm -hmm. stay together and, mm -hmm. and all of that. So it's, yes. So sorry, we got off topic. But... That's okay. We, we can just, we don't have to do everything. <laughs> we can do a few other things. So... I will, um, I think there is a lesson in all of this, both talking about Lucifer and talking about the disciples, and there's a lesson here that teaches that we learn from kids as well, and that's that in God's kingdom, what is far more important than pride or honor? What sort of things would be far more important than, I mean, but let's just, let's just think about it, right? What does it seem like Christ in his time on earth, he didn't seem to really care about honor. He didn't care much about no. pride, right? No. His, his kingdom, in fact, this has been a thing that my wife and I, yes, adults a lot of times have questions too when we're studying the Bible. And one of the questions was, um, there's a point where Christ says, so, so I'll ask you a question and ask you what that means, okay? And we'll yes. do it that way, okay? okay. This is actually interestingly a Jewish practice that they'll do with Bible study. Is they'll they'll bring up a question they don't know an answer to, and they'll give a hypothetical answer of what they think that means, and then the other person will give an answer as well. So let's try that. Okay. So I have a question right. for you. Okay. Here's the question, and we can end on this. Pass the test. Here's the question. Okay. And I have a answer. I think that works, but we'll see. So I believe it's in the Book of Luke. I'm, the location is. The location is slipping my mind right now. But in the book of Luke, there's a part where Christ says, Indeed, there are people here now who will not die until they see the kingdom of God. Okay. And the question is, what does that mean, right? Like, because, and my answer was that what that means is that the kingdom of God is not, it's not when we go to heaven. Right? The kingdom of God is when Christ would finally die and then everyone would understand what his mission was on earth. And so he's talking to some of the disciples. I would argue that the disciple James, for instance, may not have gotten to see the kingdom of God, right? Judas did not get no. to see the kingdom Judas of God. Well, definitely didn't. No, definitely, definitely did it, yeah. right? But so some did not get to see it, but I think some there probably did in that when the disciples went out, they started building this kingdom, right, that we call Christianity. I would say Christianity is the kingdom of God in that sense. And that's my answer, but I'm interested to hear what your answer is to that. So I think to go back to what was Jesus's, you know, because it wasn't pride or honor, it was definitely service mm -hmm. and being a servant. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what his focus was, being a servant and being in love. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the kingdom of God would come along that same time as when it no longer was just preached to the Israelites, but went mm -hmm. to the Gentiles, mm -hmm. which would have been the stoning of Stephen. Mm -hmm. So I would think that the kingdom of God that God was Jesus was talking about right then was when it went to when it when it spread out to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. When the Pentecost, uh, the, you know, I'm uh, sorry, not the Pentecost. Yeah, Pentecost. 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 There we go. Um, mm -hmm. They started speaking different languages and were able to reach other people. I, I and I know that was different times that came mm -hmm. first and then Stephen, but I do think the kingdom of God was when it went to the Gentiles. Okay. I think that's when it's that's what I would think because obviously it's not the kingdom of God meaning God's second coming, yeah, no. which is what the at the time that he said that would have been what the disciples thought because they well, all thought he was even, going to be. Yeah, well, they they thought so, something even more, right? And I think that's what we run into is we. Think
think of the kingdom of God. That's kind of my point, right? Yeah. Is that we think when we hear kingdom of God, we don't think that, right? right? And that's why it was really good to read this and why I wanted to ask you that question because I think a lot of times when we hear kingdom of God, we think, oh, well, we get to go to heaven or we right. think the new earth, right? Yes. It's like, but this is, we're part of God's kingdom now while right. on earth, right? Yes. We're living it already, right? It shouldn't be a, oh, we're doing all this stuff so that eventually we can have a reward. Like, you should be trying to get a bit of your reward now. And it's not reward of like, oh, if I'm Christian, I'm going to get stuff, right? Everyone's going to be nice to me. Things are going to go my way. Whoever I want to win, every election will win, right? It's not going to be like that, right? It's going to be, I mean, there's going to be a lot of hardship, right? But we're living a life in a way that looks like the new earth and in such a way that it gets more people on board, right? And more people will get to live that. And that's the, that goes back to the whole thing, right? right? Which yeah. is that it's humility. Humility is the complete opposite of selfishness, right? Selfishness is what can I get? Humility is what can I do? Which is exactly what everything mm -hmm. that, God, that Jesus personified. And kids do that too, right? They're very helpful. They They're are. way more helpful than adults. They so much joy from helping. <laughs> they do. They do. They make, it makes them so happy. Mm -hmm. And even though when they help and they, they clean so nicely, it's often not the way I would do it, so mm -hmm. I have to do it again, but they're still very helpful. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I do. I think that I think that was the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And you look at all the great men in the Bible, or who we think are great men of faith, and you look at Moses and Joseph and Jacob and uh, the priest Eli and David, and they did not have an easy life. So I think that the, the gift that you're given is that peace, mm -hmm. that peace of knowing that even though you, have, you are a sinner and even though we live in a sinful world, you cling to God and that peace is something that you can't buy, that you can't make or find. Mm -hmm. You have to only get it through your relationship with God. I agree. So I think totally. that's really important. All right. All right. Well, well then. This was, uh, we will try to make the next one a little shorter so that it isn't as like we're not as meandering but we had a good discussion right? a good we had discussion. a good discussion you know so like, we're, we're still trying to figure to, this out yes. so you know but. we're gonna post it so yes. please you can hopefully your parents are have let you put some comments down mm -hmm. if you have your own questions or own different answers mm -hmm. which would be awesome mm -hmm. and then we could discuss that in a further not the next video but maybe in a different one mm -hmm. and uh, that would be kind of fun or even right. do our zoom meetings no. so if you'll have yeah. closing prayer for us we'll I will all right that. thank you Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for uh, giving uh, both of us the opportunity to be able to, in some way, meet with our um, junior staff school students. Um, please be with them and wherever they may be while watching this video. Um, just help them to know that even though things may be a little bit weird right now, we may not be together, um, that you are always with them and we are always praying and thinking about them. Please uh, just be with each of us, uh, wherever we may be, and um, continue to help us and guide us uh, through your word to learn um, all sorts of new things each and every day. Thank you in thy name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, then we will see you guys next week. And until then, 